The opening scene features a man named Milo Stanfield who is suffering from Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD. He is seen standing on a street of New Jersey, keeping an eye on a woman in a nearby flower shop. In the midst of this, he also seems to be doing some complex calculations related to the timing of events happening in his surroundings. Milo notes the approach of a passenger bus, a pothole, a street artist, and a bicycle rider speeding. Following these observations, he crosses the street and strategically places a pen on the top of a mailbox adjacent to the pothole. Soon after, his planned chain reaction takes place. A taxi runs over the pothole, splashing the water on the pen, causing it to fall to the ground. This captures the attention of the street artist, who then walks forward to pick up the pen. At the same moment, the speeding cyclist collides with the artist, which results in him striking the mailbox and falling on the fruit stand nearby. Chaos ensues in the street, diverting the attention of everyone, including the bus driver. As a result, he does not notice the traffic light turning red and hits the same woman crossing the road, killing her on the spot. And people say Matt isn't dangerous. Milo then walks away from the scene after confirming that his plan went smoothly. The scene then cuts to an FBI special agent, Olivia Dunham. She works for the Fringe Division of Homeland Security, specializing in paranormal phenomena. Olivia seems to be returning back to work after a long gap due to her head injury. As soon as she enters the Fringe headquarters, she is greeted by one of her fellow officers, Charlie, who is the supervisor of the team. In the meantime, the chief of the agency, Walter Nett Bishop, is talking to one of the lab assistants, Philip Broyles, regarding Olivia's return. Philip says that she is a doppelganger named Faux Olivia and expresses concern if they can integrate an imposter in their team. Here, it is revealed that Olivia, who is inside the office, is not the real one. She is, in fact, an imposter who has been brought to fulfill the place of the original one. Walter Nett then reveals his motivation behind keeping Faux Olivia in this universe and implanting the real Olivia's memories into her. He claims that Faux Olivia is the only one who can travel between universes without any harm. Walter Nett wants to figure out how she can do so. For this, he says that they must make her believe that she belongs here. Philip asks, what if her new identity does not hold? To which, the chief replies that she will no longer be necessary. After that, afterwards, Charlie briefs the team on the seemingly random bus accident which he claims to have happened two times in this week. The victim has died in each case. He then asks his crew to be careful before going for the site investigation. A short while later, the FBI team arrives at the accident site and splits up to search for any leads or clues. The investigation is led by another FBI agent named Lincoln Lee, whose face appears to be ruined by burn marks. Charlie inspects the body and uses her fingerprint to retrieve her further details. She eventually finds out that the deceased woman's name is Julian Foster. Meanwhile, Olivia questions the bus driver, who is shaken by the incident as she has never even hit any birds or animals until now. Simultaneously, Agent Lee tests for any signs of environmental factors but finds nothing. However, he does find the same ballpoint pen at the scene. After inquiring with the eyewitnesses, Olivia approaches Agent Lee and tells him that the local artist had bent down to pick up the pen, during which he collided with the bicycle rider and fell into the freight stand. Upon hearing this, Agent Lee speculates that the pen is the main element that created a sequence of reactions, ultimately leading to the victim's death. The next day at French headquarters, Agent Lee and Charlie are trying to find out a connection between the bus accidents that happened in the two days. Agent Lee spots the same ballpoint pen in the photo of the first accident, which makes him even more convinced that someone has orchestrated the chain of events. Following this, they go to talk to a mathematician of the fringe agency, Astrid, and tell her about the events. However, she claims that no human can carry out such a chain of events and mold it in his or her favor twice. Amidst their argument, another similar bus accident takes place, leaving Astrid in shock. 2 plus 2 equals you get hit by a boss. The FBI agents immediately rush to the site and find that the victims are still alive this time. Upon questioning the bystanders, they learn that a dog suddenly crossed the road, causing the boss to lose control. Just then, Olivia notices a similar ballpoint pen rolling down in the ground, which makes her realize that the chain of events is not over yet. She looks around and spots a suspicious Milo looking down from an overhead bridge. Moments later, a man wearing earbuds walks 
steps forward to cross the street, only to be hit by an oncoming ambulance. I guess the paramedic needed to hit his quota. With her suspicions confirmed, Olivia alerts her team and races towards Milo. Seeing this, the latter instantly calculates another series of events and throws a bicycle off the bridge. This prompts a bus to change its path and drive right under the overhead bridge. Olivia holds him at gunpoint, threatening him to surrender, but Milo jumps off the bridge lands on the bus's roof and gets away. Milo is the bus whisperer. After this event, Milo returns home to find his sister Madeline worried for him. She tells him that she has been getting numerous calls from the hospital, but he ignores her. She then tries to convince him to surrender, claiming that he has gone way too far. However, Milo anticipates her actions and completes her sentences, effectively silencing her. Not long after, Madeline shows him a small plastic horse toy, a reminder from their mother. This makes him feel uneasy, and he walks away, saying that it is irrelevant now. On the other hand, Agent Lee is taken to the hospital for his regular skin checkup. Before entering the burn chamber, he asks Olivia to focus on finding commonalities among the three victims. Heeding his instructions, Olivia returns back to headquarters and starts talking to the witnesses of the accidents. After a bit of inspection, she discovers ties between the three victims and a medical center. All three of them were directly or indirectly related to this center. She shares her discovery with Charlie, and the two immediately head to this very medical center. Upon arriving there, Olivia notices that one set of patients are using the same ballpoint pens, as they are unable to cope with digital devices. iPads make them eye mad. Later, they meet Dr. Levin, a chief doctor, who recognizes all three victims of the bus accidents. After briefing them on some details about the victims, Dr. Levin explains that they have been helping mentally challenged patients with experimental processes to boost their intelligence. He also shows them video footage of their patients, in which Olivia spots Milo. Upon inquiring about him, Dr. Levin responds that he is one of their patients, who also went through the same drug trial that boosted his IQ exponentially. He goes on to say that Milo was released from the hospital under supervision of his sister, and that he was scheduled to return back in order to reverse the experimental process. But now, he is not responding to their calls, and he is killing everyone who is trying to take control of him. After learning about Milo's sister, the FBI agents decide to pay her a visit. Unbeknownst to them, Milo is keeping a close eye on Olivia, noting every single pattern of her movements and predicting her next move. Later on, Charlie and Olivia arrive at Milo's place where they are greeted by Madeline. They ask her about Milo's whereabouts, but she claims to be unaware of them. Sensing that she is hiding something, the agents tell her about the crimes he has committed and how dangerous it is to let him roam free, while Charlie goes to an investigate Milo's room, Olivia shares about her late sister, revealing how they used to care for one another. This comforts Madeline enough to share more details about her brother. She explains that Milo is able to predict the outcome of numerous events down to the smallest detail, and that she can break Milo's concentration only by showing him the toy horse. Whenever he sees Bullseye, he gets a woody. Olivia eventually manages to persuade her to disclose anything she knows, emphasizing that they are concerned for civilians as well as Milo's safety. Madeline then hands her a note, revealing the location of the hotel that Milo is currently staying at. After this, Olivia and Charlie discuss plans with Astrid on how to capture Milo. However, they soon realize that any plan would be futile because he can predict their every move. As a result, they opt to approach the hotel directly without any backup. I don't know how that's going to help, but they know best. In the meantime, Milo is seen at his hotel room, looking down through the window and envisioning scenarios that are going to happen in the next few minutes. With his ability, he predicts that Olivia and Charlie will arrive soon and that they will chase him. He also calculates that he can kill Olivia by luring her through a marked zone of a construction site where the air is too thin and crushing her under a load of cement bricks. Just like he predicted, the two FBI agents arrive at the hotel and find Milo waiting for them in the street. He then runs towards the construction while the agents pursue him. Olivia, who is unaware of the warning signs for the thin air zone, races through it instead of
of stopping to put on a respirator. This actually makes Milo's calculation wrong. He didn't think she'd be that dumb. In addition, she also dodges a pile of cemented bricks which Milo assumed would crush her. The villain is shocked to witness his calculation going wrong and is ultimately caught by her. At this point in time, Olivia nearly asphyxiates herself due to the low level of oxygen, but thankfully, Charlie arrives in the nick of time and helps her with a breathing apparatus. In the aftermath of these events, Charlie asks Olivia about why she did not stop to put on a respirator, to which she responds that she did not recognize the warning sign. Later on, Olivia brings Madeline to the hospital, where Milo is seen interacting with a supercomputer. According to the doctor, the IQ-boosting drug has been in Milo's brain for too long, due to which they are unable to carry out the reversal process. Now, his mind has become so advanced that only machines can comprehend his thoughts. Saddened by this news, Madeline goes inside the room and leaves the toy horse in front of her brother. The same evening, Olivia is at her place when she experiences a vision of Peter, her boyfriend from another universe. He tells her that she does not belong to this universe. In order to back up his claim, he reminds how her lack of knowledge regarding this universe saved her life earlier. According to him, she would have died if she had recognized the warning signs and stopped there. Peter encourages her to try recalling all of her memories and also kisses her before vanishing. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.